we saved $1,000 on a professional level build. So you've gotten into photography and maybe you wanna invest in some better gear, like a full frame camera, maybe some better lenses, or maybe you're trying to start a business and you wanna upgrade some gear so that you can deliver higher quality content for your clients or niche down and provide some new services to make yourself a little bit more competitive. But the catch is you're probably watching this if you're strapped for cash. But what I'm going to do is walk you through the process that I go through when I'm buying gear and specifically when I'm buying gear and I have a very small or tight budget with very little wiggle room. So what I'm going to do is build out a professional level photography build for portraits. Now here's a few things that I'm going to be looking for and you can adjust this based off of your needs. I want a full frame camera. I want something that's more than 24 megapixels. I preferably want something from Sony or Canon. So I want something that I don't have to buy new lenses for or anything like that. I also want 60 frames per second at least so that I can you know, get a little bit less motion blur with people who are moving pretty fast. I have two lenses that I have in mind. Uh, one is a 50 millimeter f 1.8 because I know I can probably get them pretty affordably or an 85 millimeter 1.8 and I want them because those are two lenses that I like for portrait photography the 85 for me is more preferable to the 50 just because I like what it does to people's faces if they're the subjects of your photography and I only have about a thousand dollars to spend so I want to come in at or under that price point. So here's what I'm thinking off the bat. I'm thinking probably something in the Canon 5D range, probably not the most recent one, but maybe like a Mark III or a Mark IV would be a good place to start looking. I'm thinking I might be able to get an A7 two or three series camera, preferably the R model, because I think those are like 40 something megapixel cameras. And both of those work within that lens ecosystem that I'm comfortable with. Let's hop into eBay here. So what I've done here is I've sorted by the Canon 5D Mark III and 5D Mark IV uh, and the buy it now option, just because I don't have time to kind of get into a bidding war, but you can probably find yourself a nice deal if you're willing to bid on a few different items. So we have a lot of them by now, like 750, 950, 599. So that's a pretty good deal. But remember, most of these are body only or they're coming with um, a kit lens, and I personally would save your money, even though you're getting a good discount on the kit lens if it's bundled in, than if you bought it separately, and I would rather just spend that little bit of extra money towards a prime lens or a lens that I know that I'm going to use all the time, rather than one that's just gonna be like this one, that just sits, you know, I always take it off. Uh, it's basically a lens cap cover <laughs> for, for my uh, little Sony guy here, my A6400. So um, definitely don't recommend the kit lens, almost never use them. A few little like cosmetic scrapes, that's fine. Not that big a deal. Let's uh, go to the description. In-body autofocus, that's fine. 1080p HD video recording, good. Audio recording, 720p. Doesn't do 4K, which is not to be expected. And I'd imagine it probably only goes up to 60 frames per second max. All features work exceptionally well. It takes beautiful images. I've upgraded the cam to the Cameron mirrorless platform with RF lens, so I need this to go. Now, I noticed on this one that the shutter count is not currently listed on here, so you're gonna have to ask sellers. You don't wanna buy something that has an astronomically high uh, shutter count because shutters are things that need to be replaced. It, but it's kind of like buying a new car and then you find out you need to replace all of the tires. It's not inexpensive. Okay, this one is $599. However, I'm noticing that the Mark III's are only like a 22.3 megapixel camera, which is fine. But I know that when I take pictures with the camera that I want to buy now, I want to blow them up pretty large, like large format prints from time to time. So I'm not sure about that. They are coming in at pretty decent price point and the shutter count right here is 445,133. So this is probably the like late middle aged version of a camera, probably another 100,000 shutters, which will probably last you six months to a year. If you're a sports photographer, you'll blow through that really quickly. So I am going to press pause on that for a second and keep in mind those prices because I know I'm also gonna need to buy a lens for this as well. I know Canon makes a 50 millimeter lens that I've used before and I know that I don't like the entry level lens. It's made out of plastic and not all plastic lenses are bad but the casing is made of plastic. It feels kind of cheap and I've had it break on me and it's also a 1.8 
but that's like a 200 to 300 hundred dollar lens i have used the canon 85 1.8 and that is a really great lens and you can probably get them at a really good value and that's my preferable one so let me just see how much those ones cost so it's like 399 let's check it out i'm gonna say 700 for the one you know we can make an offer and try and come in under at like 700 instead of the 750 that the one person wanted to offer um for the lower shutter for the shutter count we don't know and i'm gonna assume the shutter count is maybe like 250 thousand so i'm just weighing my variables right now i know that i can get in at a canon 5d mark III at about 700 dollars, and i know just from browsing around ebay that i can probably get this for like 275 to 350 so that'll hit us at about that one thousand dollar mark but i also want to price out some sony's just in case. this canon ef 1.5 Looks like it's in good condition. There's no scratches, not a lot of wear and tear. Uh, we have images of the front and back end of the lens. Comes with a lens hood, which is fine. Those are cheap. You can buy whatever you want aftermarket. Um, has some sort of filter on it, which is fine if you shoot with filters, but I don't even know what it is. It's hard for me to just hover over it. One thing to keep an eye out for when you are buying used lenses is you want to check around the edges where the glass meets the uh, casing. So there can sometimes be mold in camera lenses because they get m wet or moisture inside and then you get fungus growing in them and you basically have a very limited shelf life on that lens because that fungus is just going to keep growing uh, so you just want to avoid it at all costs and you want to take care of your gear so that you can resell it in the future but also so that you don't have to repurchase a lens you can make these lenses last a lifetime pretty much if you take care of them all right so that's good so we're just going to round up and say about a thousand dollars after shipping it doesn't check off every single one of my boxes, so I'm gonna check in on Sony and see if I can find a deal. And I know I'm looking a lot on eBay today, but I know that you can definitely find some even better deals and coming at a lower price point than even what we're saying if you're willing to haggle and drive for some equipment on Facebook Marketplace. But for the purpose of this video, I'm trying to do it quick and dirty because I actually do need this other camera fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do here, I've typed in Sony A7 and I want an R specifically because they're a pretty high megapixel camera. If you're doing photography, the R is probably the route you want to go if you have the money for it. You definitely don't want to go with the S. Those are primarily geared towards video. $599 for the A7R. A7R2 right here, 42 megapixel camera, plus camera grip, plus three batteries. Fairly good deal, 925 or best offer. So you could probably come in at 900 and they'd probably be like, yep, right away, let me sell it to you. And you're getting some accessories. It's always good to have extra batteries. It's well taken care of, around 58K shutter count. Aw, it's a baby. Uh, minor scuffs on the camera body, but LCD has no dead pixels and sensor is immaculate. All the buttons work as they should. All right, so let's check out the sensor and you always want to check that out you if it has like scratches on it instantly reject it this looks like it has like two pieces of dust on it but those aren't scratches so looking okay there after a little bit of digging i found this sony a7 r2 it's in fairly good condition and uh it's a little dirty around the edges there but they're asking for 830 for it and I'm going to come in with an offer at 799 and see if they accept it um, it's in pretty good condition it's a 42 megapixel camera um, it's a little bit higher but I know I can probably find a deal on a lens if I hunt hard for one so I'm going to eat a little bit more money here because it checks off every single one of my boxes and a few of my wish list items. So the battery door is the only thing that's broken here, but that's like a super easy fix. And if I end up putting a, um, like a battery pack on it, I'm gonna have to remove the door anyway. Um, and I'm, to be honest, that's most likely what's gonna happen. And then the shutter is only 85K, which is really good. So let's see if they accept it. Um, please feel free to contact me, okay. Uh, John 317 Okay, I put an offer in on it. Now. We need to hunt for a lens. All right, Sony 85 f1.8 prime five man 
Yikes. Oh, these ones are all brand new. We have 484, but that's brand new. Viltrox one, I don't think I want to go with Viltrox. I've never used them before. I don't want to take a chance with this kind of money. And we're already at 799 if they accept our off offer. We can definitely get an 85 millimeter, but this brand, I've never used them, so I don't trust them. Uh, and I wouldn't take a risk on it especially if we're trying to do professional level gear. So don't be tempted by those kinds of deals. All right, so I found this one. It's being offered by it now or best offer for 225. And uh, it looks like it's been kept in really good condition. It is a 50, so not my first choice, but we are getting my first choice in terms of camera. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do like 190, knowing that I really want it at that like $200 price point so we can stay under our $1,000 budget. If you like grossly undercut people, don't expect them to negotiate, they will ignore you. So here's the update. We came in after taxes and shipping at $1,070 for the Sony A7R2 camera and the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8 lent and i'd say that's pretty good i could squeeze that extra 70 dollars out so we need to talk about savings here because it was substantial this sony a7r2 brand new so if you want one brand new out of the box 17.99 so we saved half of our money on that so compared to full price all right so let's like fast forward to some unboxing videos when it finally gets here I already unboxed it. Got too excited, this came first in the mail. It's in pretty good condition. There's some scuffs around the edges here. We saw that in the pictures. It was actually surprisingly like dusty. It's like somebody had like Cheeto fingers and was using this camera. The sensor is like pretty immaculate. Just need to scrub down and um, I added, uh, you know, my little like a uh, strap attachment. And now we're going to unbox this, the, oh, this, the lens. I'm not an unboxing channel. So let's open this up here. Ooh, was this just like knocking around in shipping? I don't like that. It's couched inside here, then this is a snug fit. We're good, we're all good. So first things first. All right, let's take that off. All right, element on here. It's probably, it's good. I mean, I would take pictures with it if I was in the field, but I'm, I am gonna wipe it down just also because I'm a bit of a germaphobe too. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna wash my hands and give this a quick rub down with like an alcohol wipe real quick. Kind of a loud autofocus, but this isn't a review. Cool, boom. All right, not bad. Brand new, this lens and this body would cost us $2,148. We saved $1,000 on a professional level build. I am so excited to try this out. I'm gonna go take some pictures, probably not today because it's dark out. We'll see you after that. We're back. I took a few pictures. I'm gonna edit some of these photos uh, and then I'll give you my impressions as well. All right, so here's a couple pictures that I really like that I got uh, before and edited. This is pretty good. The lens, um, I've used the 85 before and that's way more tack sharp than this 50 is, uh, but still good. And this third one here is to test the low light capabilities of this camera. The ISO is at like 5,000 and it's really dark and borderline underexposed. And there's really only any noise in the skin tones. Overall, I'm really happy with this purchase. And if this was the first time that I was ever buying like professional level gear, I would be ecstatic with like the results that I'm, I'm getting right now. If I were a little bit more patient and willing to drive an hour away, willing to haggle prices, willing to search for a little bit, I could have gone on Facebook Marketplace and I know that I could have gotten a deal if I were willing to drive up to like two hours away. And that's really up to you. Or if you wanted to haggle on eBay just a little bit more. So I really think we probably could have come in at $800 if we really searched for deals. If this video was cool for you, leave me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what specifically was the most helpful in this video. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover in the future, or if you have any comments or recommendations for things that I looked over and you think would be good advice to anybody else watching this video. This video is now over.